Hi guys, DLM Graphics here. I'm bringing you a tutorial on how to cross process a image of your choosing. Um, it must be said that it's weird how, although we've got further in technology and we've got the digital cameras and everything like that, we still want to go back to our past. We want to emulate that past, and um, you know, in the photo ed photo editing world, you can cross process your photos to give them that interesting look that you see on the screen now um... this has been a busy week, it's Friday uh... it's five to seven, I'm tired <laughs> but I've done this tutorial for you guys and um... I hope you enjoy and um... yeah I'm going to be using the lovely Emma Watson as a model and um... let's get started, so we have our model and we have our image now it's important that we, that we have a uh, clear depth of field that we can use back here to um, blur. We want to be able to have a distinguishable difference between our model and our background. Another note is that our picture needs to have um, a lot of contrast and a good tonal range to be the most effective and um, that's about it so if you have something like this you can cross process this image with ease and um, here we go so for the first up we're going to get our layers if I can access them why can't I access them Oop. Oop. and we're going to create a new layer and we're going to name this original Okay. Now that's going to increase our workflow rate later on, and it's always good to label your uh, layers something distinguishable that you can use and make sense to you. Because um, for most people, layer five million three hundred and two doesn't really mean something. So it's always good to layer label your layers. First off, we're going to create uh, an adjustment, and we're going to do that with the curves adjustments there. Now this is going to tweak our tones so that we get a more muted color. So we're going to go to image, then we're going to go to layer even, new adjustment layer, curves. Press OK. And we're going to change each value of red, green and blue individually. So on a red, on a red, we're going to change our output to 117. And our input to naught. Well, we also change our input to 135 and uh, 135 and our output to 138 or thereabouts. As a note, I have done this before, so I know my values that I'm going to be using. Next up, we're going to be using the green one, and there's going to be two adjustments on this. We're going to change our output to 25, input to naught, and also a curve up here. And we're going to I'm going to change this manually to 145 and 117. Remember, it's whatever looks best on your image that you should use. Oh my! Why is my computer so slow? I don't know. Blue. Now we're going to have three differences on this one, and those are going to be output 59, input naught. Next up, we're going to go for a uh, output of 143 and an input of 138. Why is this running so slow? Okay, 143 and 138. Next up, we're going to take our input level up here and we're going to change that down to something lower and to 191 and 255. And you can see that that's given us a more muted color tone. Our tweaks have been successful. Um, next up, we're going to change our color balance and this is going to reduce the contrast in our image a bit, just a little. So we're going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, 
and color balance. Press OK. And we're going to do this individually. But I'm going to go through this a bit quicker. So on our shadows point, well, make sure you preserve luminosity. You want to click that. So our red is going to go up to about 11. Our green is going to come down to about minus 8. And our blue is going to go up down even to minus 2. On our midtones, our red is going to go up to minus 58. I know that doesn't make sense, but yes, down to minus 58 on the cyan scale. Our uh, green is going to go down. Our blue is going to go up. And we're going to move on to highlights. On our highlights mode, we're going to go to minus 7, minus 8, and 23. Minus 8, and 23. Alright, that's good. We're happy with our tones in this color and the colors in our scene. But it's a little too oversaturated for what we want to use it for. So, we're going to add a black and white adjustment there. Okay, and this is going to be really quick. We're just going to turn the opacity down to 50. And I'll fill down to about 90. Now, what we want to do is we want to, we want to rub out anything that's not our model. So we're going to, well, that's not on our model. And the way we're going to do that is by painting onto our adjustment layer. That's why we're using adjustments there. So what we're going to do is we're going to, Paint over the uh, lips, the eyes, and um, a bit of the top. So uh, let's do this. And this works better if you've got, obviously, bigger eyes, bigger lips, and uh, so forth. But um, well, we can manage. So I'm going to have a very small size here. Probably take my hardness down a little. And I'm just going to paint in her lips again. And her eyes. And we're good. Let's paint in a bit of her top. So get our picture bigger. And you can see that we're distinguishing her from her background now. Okay, so we've painted in our model. And uh, yeah, I know her lips look a bit weird. So we're just going to take opacity down and paint back over them. So, next up, we're going to, um, I'm going to press Control, Alt, and E. And that's going to merge our layers together. Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Yep, that's going to make it look merge our layers together and we're going to name this blur uh, this is because we're going to blur it so we're going to go to filter blur Gaussian blur and that's a bit high so in this picture we're going to blur our image to about five pixels. I'm going to name our layer blur and we're going to add a mask to it. So next up we're going to paint out our model so that she uh, she's not blurred anymore. Okay, now that we've blurred out our image, um, I'm back with you guys and we're going to 
this is what it should look like. Now for any part of her body that was close to the ground, you can see I haven't used that much of a blur. And uh, bits next to her foot aren't blurred in. This is slightly blurred, a bit less blurred. And I'm using a very low uh, opacity paintbrush so that the blur just falls out. Okay, well you said that blur, it's a blur quite a lot in that sentence. Anyway, um, next up we're going to add an effect. And it's a photo effect that is um, going to add a misty kind of layer to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to name our layer mist. Uh, not layer styles. Mist. Mist. And um, we're going to set our opacity down to 20. Oh, so we want a very uh, low color, and we're going to just paint in with a big pixel brush, bigger, bigger, smaller, yeah that's it, that's okay. I'm going to paint in a white kind of effect around the uh, bottom of the image and over the bonus body, so it's going to go. It's going to whiten out the back. We don't want to put this over the head, otherwise, um, well, she'll, she'll look too washed out. So that's a very simple white effect done. Not too hard to do. And um, because we've controlled it by the adjustment layer, we've got no worries about the, uh, the white coming through too strong. And... Um, very close to the end, we're going to add a white vignette. So, we're going to add a new layer, and we're going to call it, guessed it, white vignette. Damn it! Uh, white vignette. I think that's how you spell it. And uh, we're going to set our opacity down to about uh, 75. We're going to use the same brush as, as the mist. Um, and we're going to come in from the right where there's more background space. Ooh. It's a bit harsh. And uh, probably lower that opacity a bit. Lower the opacity of my brush a bit. Oh, I find this the hardest part. Maybe I'm going to actually bump that up quite a big bit. Yeah, that's better. And uh, so I'm sorry if there's going to be a, any disruption in the uh, the voiceover. It's coming up to the end, but my uh, auto screen recorder decided that it wasn't going to stop uh, carry on recording. So, um, yeah. man, we, we're nearly finished. So I thought I'll just patch it on to the end. So we've got a white vignette. And uh, the very last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a color solid color adjustment there, top of the layer stack. So we're going to add a solid color adjustment there. And um, here we are. And then we're going to use a bluish kind of color. Um, That kind of color, press OK, and uh, we're going to reduce the, the layer opacity down to about 20%. And now that, that gives the uh, white just a slight tint. I image a well, blur background, and um you now have a uh, cross-processed image and well done but um, we're going to I'm going to step one more we're going to take one more step in this actually I've added a brainwave we're going to take the color off of our model because um, I doubt she'd be too happy with being a blue 
that's just me. So thank you for watching this video tutorial on how to cost process an image in Adobe Photoshop. I was using Adobe Photoshop CS5 Extended, but I believe this works with any Photoshop, so you shouldn't have too much trouble. Um, if you could give this a like, a thumbs up, that would be great, excellent. Um, I really enjoy it when you like it. If you enjoyed this more formal style of tutorial, leave a comment, give it a like. If you prefer my older stuff, um, then tell me and I can go back to that. So, uh, and if you don't know what my older stuff goes at, check out my channel. Uh, like my stuff, subscribe, and I can get you videos soon, uh, quickly, and hopefully regularly. Um, obviously, um, it's exam season at the moment, so, um, well, not obviously, you don't know when this video is going to be put out. But uh, it is exam season at the point of making this video. I've got a night off, so I've made this video for you guys. Hope you enjoy it, and, um, yeah, thanks for watching.